Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. Players prefer to keep track of their higher scores and better equipment in the games. Games are getting longer and longer, with some having over 100 hours of content. Allowing the player to save their game is one of the most essential features in your game. In my previous episode, we have talked about how to save and load data by player profs. Player profs is a special caching system and good at keeping track of simple settings for the player between game sessions. Many people make the mistake of thinking they can use the player profs as a save game system as well, but that's a bad idea. In this episode, we are taking a look at how to save and load data by another method, serialization. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, we will introduce the key concept of what is serialization, what's the differences between field class and field string class, how to convert an object into database, memory, and field. Second, we will use this concept to save and load coins and diamonds in the project. Finally, we can also save and load other data such as all of the enemy's positions in your game. We will find the data field in your computer and know what the data real is. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download the starting project or completed project from my Google Drive. Also, I have uploaded all of the assets and screenshots on my GitHub. Okay, let's get into it. So, first thing first, what is serialization? Serialization is the automatic process of transforming data structures or object states into a format that Unity can store and reconstruct later. Some of the Unity built-in features are serialization, such as saving and loading the inspector window. For example, if we want to show a private variable's value on inspector, we can mark as serialized field. For saving and loading, Unity uses serialization to load and save things, assets, and asset bundle to and from your computer hard drive. This includes data saved in your own scripting API objects such as model behavior components and script objects. In other words, serialization is the conversion of an object into a string of bytes. Objects include any script or fields in Unity. We can store objects into database, memory, and field. In this episode, we will introduce three concepts, field, field streams, and binary formatter. First, let's we talk about the field class. Field class is a static class that provides static methods for the creation, copying, deletions, moving, and opening of fields, and adds the inclusion of field string objects. In other words, field class is using for the field operation in c -sharp. We can create, delete, copy, etc. options do with field class. If you want to use this class, you have to use systems.io namespace. IO stands for input and output. Then field stream. Field string class is used to perform the basic options of reading and writing option systems fields. Field string class helps in reading from, writing, and closing fields. In other words, field string expose the content of this field as a string. So, what's the differences between field and field string? If you want to move, create, or open a field, you will use the field class. If you want to read and write a field content, you will use a string or field stream. And this field stream or string could have been opened using a field object. In this episode, we will use binary formatter class. This class serializes and deserializes an object in binary format. Serialize an object means convert this object into string. Deserialize means convert string back to its object with all data intact. It's typically used with to save data to the hard disk, so it can be loaded again after this game is closed and start up again. Inside saving function, we will use one method called serialize. The first parameter is one string type, and the second parameter is one object type. We will use this method to serialize the object to the given string. This is our saving process. Likewise, inside the load function, we will use another method called deserialize. The parameter is string type. Using deserialize functions can deserialize specified string into an object. Alright, after understanding these three concepts, let's get into our project. So just open up Unity and currently we already have something in here. Go to scripts folder and open the game manager script and game menu script. In our previous episode, we have created two functions to save and load the data by player props. 
In this episode, we create another two functions called save by serialization and load by deserialization. Once we press the save button on game menu, we will call this save by serialization function. We can commence our previous functions first. Now, we want to save our coins number, diamonds number, and player current positions and all of the enemy's positions by serialization. Since serialization is the conversion of an object into a string of bytes, we have to create an object first. Let's create one C-sharp script called save. The first step is to remove the mono behavior inheritance because we only want to create the save single class and this is not going to act as component in our game. This is one more very important bit of code you need to add. Above the class decoration, mark as systems.serializable. This tells Unity that this class can be serialized, which means you can turn it into a string of bytes and save it to a field on disk. In order to save the game, we will need to keep track of the coin's number, diamond number, and player position. As we talked about before, serialization is the conversion of an object into a string of bytes. First, we need to receive one save object. We can create one function called createSaveGameObject. The return type should be save type. First, create one new instance of save type. And in the end of these functions, return save in order to avoid the error. Save.coins number is equal to our player's coins count. So how do I get the value of the coins in the game? We have already declared the coins variable inside the game manager script and made this game manager script a singleton. We can easily get access of the coins variable from other class. Type game manager dot instance dot coins. Likewise, save dot diamond number is equal to game manager dot instance dot diamonds. In order to get access of the player position, I have pre-declared one private play movement type variable called player. The player game object has the player movement script attached to it. We can say save dot player position x is equal to player dot transform dot position dot x. Save dot player position y is equal to player dot transform dot position y. Unfortunately, we forgot to set the player position variables type to float type instead of the integer type. Inside the save by serialization function, create a save instance with all of the data for current session saved into it. Let's call it binary formatter and set the binary formatter and set it equal to a new binary formatter. This namespace allows us to access the binary formatter. Then create a field stream by passing a pass for save instance to be saved to. Let's create a variable of type field stream. Let's call it field stream and set it equal to field.create. For this work, we need to make sure using systems.io namespace. IO stands for input and output. Systems.io is the namespace we use whenever we want to work with fields on our operating systems. The path I used application dot persistence data pass and add the slash data dot text. We can get the path to a data directory on the operating system that isn't going to suddenly change. Even you have a window, I have a Mac. Now there will be a field named data dot text on your computer. The text was just used for an example and you can use any extension for the field save name. Binary formatter serialize the data and write it to disk and close off the field stream. Let's do binary formatter dot serialize, which means that we are going to write data to the field. 
The first parameter is string type variable, and the second parameter is an object type. Finally, once we have finished writing data to fill, we want to close it off. So we go fill string dot close. That's all we need to do for saving function. Inside the load by deserialization function, first we have to check whether the save field exists or not. If it does, we can load it again. Otherwise, it logs to the console that there is no save field in this game. Similar to what we did when saving the game, we create a binary formatter. So binary formatter, let's call it binary formatter, equals to a new binary formatter. We need to open up a few string, so we will go few string, few string equals to few dot open, and get a pass and the few mode is of course open. Only this time we are providing it with a string of bytes to read instead of write. We can read from this string by going binary formatter dot deserialize. We then store this data as with anything else in a variable, so create a save type variable that's called save and set it equal to the result. There's a red line here and that's because we need to cast this, we need to tell it what type of data we are working with. So we are going to format it as a save type data. Finally, say fillString.close. Now we have the same class information, we need to convert that into the game state. Coins in our game is equal to save.coins number. Game manager .instance diamond is equal to save.diamond number. Our current player position is equal to new victor2. Inside the parentheses, save.playerPositionX, save.playerPositionY. If you go back into Unity and run our scene, we can see that our players have received 20 coins and 30 diamonds. And our player current position is on here. Now, press the save button on the game menu and resume the game. After a couple of seconds, our player has received more coins and diamonds and standing on different position. Once we press the load button, our player can still return to his previous position with the correct number of coins and diamonds. Cool. Now, we have saved our game in a few. However, I did not find the data.txt field on my computer. Why? We can go to unit document. If you are working on Windows systems, the field should be on this path. However, if you work on Mac, the persistent data path is returned into the user library folder and this folder is often hidden. So if you want to see what's real inside this field, we can replace the persistent data path with data path. After that, we can also save and load the data in Unity. Additional, we can receive one text field on our project. I'm going to open this field by sublime. You will notice that our field has saved in binary format. Alright, we have almost completed this episode. If you want to save and load more advanced features such as the enemy positions and the enemy status, I will try to complete it. There are 5 bytes in our game. And we have one bat prefab. Open the bat c -sharp script. We have one public boolean variable that is called is dead. Then we have another two public flow type variables called bat position x, bat position y. Mark these variables hide inspector, which means makes these two variables not show up in the inspector but be serialized. Inside the update function, we are going to assign this game object current position to these two variables. If the bat is not dead, which means is that is equal to be false, bat can move towards to our player. 
Also, we need to add another conditions inside this if statement. Once our bet scales point is less than zero, the boolean variable is that is equal to be true. Inside game manager script, we declare the list and its type we want to store in the list. In our case, it's bet type. Go to game manual script, we have another bad type variable called bad game object. This variable serves as one bad prefab. Once we want to instantiate the bad, if the bad is destroyed after we press the save button, where well, we still want to load this bad, we will instantiate this new bad game object. Back to save script, we add more variables inside this script. In this case, we need to add the enemy positions and its status. Back to Unity and select Game Manager. Drag all of the enemies into this list. And we don't forget that we have a reference to our bad game object in our game menu. So let's establish this connect as well. Inside the save function, we need to for loop all of the enemies. We can add the new boolean variable's value to the list. List dot add the bat dot is that. Likewise, we can also add the value on enemy position x and enemy position y list. Inside the load function, first, we have to for loop all of the enemies in this game. In our game, we have 5 bytes, which means we need to for loop 5 times. If the bat is equal to no, which means this bat is destroyed. If save dot is that is equal to be false, which means that the bat was alive before we press the save button and be destroyed after pressing the save button. We want to instantiate a new bat game object and his position was saved on the list. Then fill in the missing object in the correct index in this list. Otherwise, if the bat is not destroyed, we can save our work by assigning their saving position data to his current transform position. Before we run our game, don't forget to check. I made one mistake on here. This should be is that is equal to be false. Once our bat is not dead, this bat can move towards our player. So if I save my scrape and switch back, once we press the save button, Unity has saved our player positions and all of the enemy positions. You can press the load button and check it out. Even we have destroyed one of the bats. If we press down the load button, we can also return to our original game status. If we have destroyed two enemies and save our game. When we press the load button, we can also return to the game statics as well. If you want to save the enemy health point, you can add more features inside the save object and try it out. Instead of using player press which create a key and to save the single value, saving the loading data by serialization can be beneficial in lots of ways because we only need to create one single class. And this class is responsible for combining kind of information what we want to save. And all of the data will be transformed inside one function.
By the way, although binary formatter is hard for others to change, it's also very difficult for us to read. So what kind of other methods can help us save and load the data with easy to read? Alright, this is the end of this video. In the next video, we'll talk about another key concept of the saving and the loading games in Unity. Jason. If you are curious about another method for saving and loading data in Unity, you can find more links in the description below. Hopefully you can enjoy the second episode of this series. If you enjoyed these videos and found helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share with friends and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. This is much more to come. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.